In the previous step, we ran our first agent, saw the cluster members, and queried that node. In this guide, we'll register our first service and query that service. A service can be registered either by providing a service definition or by making the appropriate calls to the HTTP API. A service definition is the most common way to register services, so we'll use that approach for this step. We'll be building on the agent configuration we covered in the previous step. First, create a directory for console configuration. Console loads all configuration files in the configuration directory, so a common convention on Unix systems is to name the directory something like etsconsole.d. The .d suffix implies this directory contains a set of configuration files. Next, we'll write a service definition configuration file. Let's pretend we have a service named web running on port 80. Additionally, we'll give it a tag we can use as an additional way to query the service. This tag will be Rails. Now, restart the agent providing the configuration directory. You'll notice in the output that it synced the web service. This means that the agent loaded the service definition from the configuration file and has successfully registered it in the service catalog. If you want to register multiple services, you can create multiple service definition files in the console configuration directory. Now once the agent is started and the service is synced, we can query the service using either the DNS or the HTTP API. Let's first query our service using the DNS API. For the DNS API, the DNS name for our service is name.service.console, or in this case, web.service.console. By default, all DNS names are always in the console namespace, although this is configurable. The service subdomain tells console that we're querying services, and then the name is the name of the service. For the web service we registered, the conventions and settings yield a fully qualified domain name of web.service.console. As you can see, an A record was returned with the IP address of the node on which the service is available. A records can only hold IP addresses. You can also use the DNS API to retrieve the entire address port pair as an SRV record. Use the dig command again, but with SRV on the end. The SRV record says that the web service is running on port 80 and exists on the node. An additional section is returned by the DNS with the A record for that node. Additionally, we can also use the DNS API to filter services by tags. The format for tag-based service queries is tag.name.service.console. In this example, we ask console for all web services with the Rails tag. We get a successful response since we registered our service with that tag. In addition to the DNS API, the HTTP API can be used to query services. We'll use the curl command to query the HTTP API. The Catalog API gives all nodes hosting a given service. As we'll see later with health checks, you typically want to query just for healthy instances where the checks are passing. This is what DNS is doing under the hood. Here's a query to look for only healthy instances. Service definitions can be updated by changing configuration files and sending a SIGHUP to the agent. This lets you update services without any downtime or unavailability to service queries. Alternately, the HTTP API can be used to add, remove, and modify services dynamically. We've now configured a single agent and registered a service. This is good progress, but let's explore the full value of console by learning how to automatically encrypt and authorize service-to-service -service communication with Console Connect.